Ladies, any assorted non-dudes in the audience, step away. This video is for the fellas. Finally, a YouTube video for men. I mean, probably if you're an undude, you can watch it, I guess, but I can't guarantee it's gonna be of any use to the undudely among you. There's probably some advice that applies to other people, but you know, consider the source. Hey, it looks like COVID-19 is finally winding down, except in the parts of the world that we deliberately let die for money. Maybe you even got that juice injected into your arms. Congrats. And that means everybody's only got one thing on their minds. You know it, I know it. It's consensual adult genital touching, but not just sex, love. You wanna get out there and smooch, fuck yeah, dude. But for some people, it's difficult to find someone who is down to clown around town. And what's worse, virtually all information given about how to do better at getting and completing dates is from antisocial creeps dressed like stage magicians who want you to pay them to be told that if you pester enough women, eventually one will have judgment bad enough to sleep with you. So how do you do good at dating? How do you become a good, good dater? While also fulfilling your responsibility to not be a creep, sex weirdo, or a girl botherer. I believe that I can help you with this. Here are my bona fides. I am married to an actual human woman. We are in love and now no one else may marry her. I've finished dating, I beat it, I won every day. I look like this. I make YouTube videos for a living. I've seen almost every episode of most series in the CW Arrowverse and still I convinced a beautiful woman to marry me. If I can find love, you can too. Hey, you down in the dumps a little bit? You thinking, oh geez, not me. I'm, I'm a complete hobgoblin. Nobody's gonna date me. Good luck, asshole. You can't make me dateable. First of all, that sounds like a very painful attitude. I'm really sorry that you feel that way. It's give yourself a moment to sit with that. That sounds like it sucks. Lots of people feel that way. It's okay. And I want to be gentle here because I know you're speaking from a place of hurt. But you're wrong, shit for brains, fuck you. There are three categories of reasons why someone might think that they are undateable and they are all within your power to change. I'm undateable because I'm ugly. Ugliness is not real. Ugliness is a fake idea. Ugliness was made up to sell you cosmetics and sports cars. It is an illusion kept alive by our collective belief in it. Now, I'm not saying that all people are equally attractive. That's obviously not true. Not every dude is gonna be Idris Elba. Some people have a natural advantage in the looks department. We just gotta live with that. Nothing we can do about it. But anyone can be hot, anyone. No exceptions, no ifs, ands, or buts, except for buts with two Ts. I don't care about your bone structure. I don't care about your weight. I don't care if you have some sort of disfigurement. I don't, and I don't mean you gotta get super jacked, like you gotta have your body shaped like a Dorito because not everybody can do that and not everybody should have to do it if they don't want to. Nonetheless, a hottie resides within you begging to be let out. Trust me on this. Let the hottie out. Let the hottie out of your body. Now let me explain what I mean here because it's a little counterintuitive. You often hear people say that confidence is attractive, as though it means being confident has some sort of magical quality that people can sense and it instantly makes you likable. And that's kind of a catch-22, isn't it? Because if you're not confident, you, you start to think, oh geez, if I could just be more confident, then people would like me. But then you get unconfident about the fact that you're not confident. To remedy this contradiction, most people say, fake it till you make it. Just pretend to be confident until you do feel confident. And that advice, is major dog shit. Unconfident people do not know how to behave like confident people. And if you tell someone to simply behave like they imagine a confident version of themselves would, they end up in their own head. They act like cocky jerks or just spin in circles seeming more and more insecure. And even if they did somehow manage to convincingly portray themselves as confident, it wouldn't fucking matter because confidence in and of itself is not attractive. It's what being confident does for you that's attractive. Take, for example, the way you dress. How many dudes do you know that wear big baggy clothes because they're uncomfortable with their weight? Wouldn't they look better if they wore clothes that fit? If they worried less about dressing to hide their body and thought a bit more about dressing to complement their body? Or take the way that a confident person talks about their hobbies or interests. When an unconfident person does it, they make excuses or act like the things they love are shameful or boring. Oh yeah, you know, I like anime, but I'm not like, I'm not like super, I'm not like one of those weirdos that's super into anime, you know? When a confident person talks about their interests, they do it with a passion, assuming that you will be as interested as they are. That is an attractive quality. 
Fuck yeah, I love anime. You ever see that in My Hero Academia? This is as far as I can go with the example because I'm not familiar with that particular anime. Even if the person you're courting doesn't like the same shit you like, they will like that you like something. That means you're not boring. Now you can't emulate being confident. That's a losing strategy. However, you can find the ways that being unconfident causes you to self-sabotage and correct those behaviors. Not only will that give you the benefits of confidence, but over time, that actually will help you become more confident. Now, I don't want to act like that's some easy fix. It's going to require some real courage on your part to do because you're giving up the methods you use to protect yourself from the things you're unconfident about. And that has the possibility of making you feel worse. You're going to have to risk it for the biscuit on this one. Beyond that, just look tidy. Most of what people think of as ugliness is just untidiness. Trim your facial hair, tweeze that unibrow, iron your shirt. Make sure your clothes then have holes or stains. Just Take care of yourself and demonstrate through your appearance that you give a shit about how you look, even if you don't really. Keep in mind that dating isn't necessarily just about you. You have to be willing to show a prospective partner that you're willing to meet them halfway. So it doesn't matter if you have like acne or something, but it does matter if you show up to the date with a bunch of spinach in your teeth and you haven't eaten spinach in a couple hours and they're like, how'd that spinach get there? Does this person not floss their teeth after they ate spinach? Make sure to take care of your major stink zones. Do not produce a stink or stinks if you can help it. Don't wear cologne, mind you, because no one likes cologne. There's never been a cologne that smells good in history. If you think your cologne smells good, you're lying to yourself. And if other people have told you that your cologne smells good, they are lying to you. And I am a little bit biased here because I'm a little bit allergic to cologne and every time I smell it, it gives me a horrible headache. But just fuck cologne, don't wear cologne, okay? If you're able to, slap on some deodorant. And I know this sounds like common sense, but trust me, somebody out there needs to hear it. I am undateable because I'm awkward. Are you awkward or do you just feel awkward around people, because there's a difference. A lot of people with social anxiety walk into social situations, feel awkward, and then project that feeling inwards, say to themselves, oh geez, I must be a big weirdo who can't interact with people because I felt weird around the people in this interaction. And maybe, maybe that's true, probably not, but maybe. So what? Awkwardness isn't that bad. Like most people consider themselves socially awkward and most people have a few friends they consider socially awkward. It's not a quality that necessarily makes people dislike you. It might make it harder for you in social situations, but like, what do you think, all awkward people are doomed to loneliness forever? And look, I know I, I, I'm making it sound easier than it is. I'm simplifying a lot here, especially when it comes to neurodivergent people, some of whom might struggle with awkwardness in a more palpable way. But people seem to have this idea that being awkward means you're somehow unable to make friends or be around people. And it might feel that way to you, but it's not true. Like, believe me, I've spent a lot of time with stand-up comics, some of the most socially fucked up people you can imagine, and they've been popular and beloved. Beyond that, a lot of people consider themselves awkward when other people might not even notice. Like, I can't count the amount of times people have apologized to me for being awkward because I got quiet. When in reality, I wasn't even thinking about that. I was like thinking about women sitting on birthday cakes or whatever. You know, the normal stuff I think about. Consider that maybe it's not you that's awkward, but the person you're speaking to. Maybe the reason they're being quiet isn't because they're secretly judging you, but rather because they're trying to figure out what to say to you that won't make them look like complete weirdos. But okay, let's, for the sake of argument, let's assume that you are hopelessly, excruciatingly awkward. You're just a social disaster. That just means you have to be interesting and likable enough to overcome that. Be nice, get some hobbies. It's all good, it'll come out in the wash. I'm undateable because I can't meet people. Okay, but yes, you can. Cause like there are dozens of apps specifically for the purpose of finding people to date. So yes, you can, of course you can. Nobody matches with you on those apps, fix your profile. Your profile probably sucks. Show it to your friends. Ask them what they think. Pick better photos where you're not holding a fish. Write more about yourself. Have some questions in your profile for people to answer. Have some fun with it. You don't want to use the app? Okay. Then go out and do things that require you to be around people. A lot. Join local sports leagues or go volunteering or whatever. Meet enough people and eventually one of them will want to smooch you. That's just math. But probably, you know, just get over yourself and use the apps. 2021. If you followed the advice so far, you've probably lined up a few dates. Nice. Congrats. If not, be patient. It'll happen. 
Just some people take longer than others. It's not a big deal. Couple things to keep in mind going forward. Always be honest about what you want. You don't want to be out there breaking people's hearts. If you just want a casual thing, tell people that. If you want a serious thing, tell people that. Don't fuck with people's feelings. How would you like it if they did that to you? Your first date should be an hour or two tops somewhere public. Coffee shops are nice for this because it's a way to meet someone in the daytime and it subtly signals, hey, I'm not just trying to fuck you. This is super cash. And if you are just looking for someone to do sex with, then meet up, for, meet up with them at a bar for a drink. No judgment here, just keep in mind, they might not want to and you have to respect that or you're the worst kind of human being. My first date with my wife was at a board game cafe. Well, it was supposed to be, except the board game cafe was closed, so we had to go to a regular cafe. But my point is, board game cafe, that sounds like fun. I know you're all big nerds who love board games. You could do that. Maybe a cat cafe. I don't know. Do something fun. That way, even if the date sucks, at least you had a cool day. Your goal in every date is not to get the other person to like you. Don't think like that. Don't even try, because it'll make you seem cloying and desperate. Your goal is to determine whether or not you like them. You want to put your best foot forward, sure, but your goal isn't to try to impress them. This is not a job interview. You can't just lie like you always should at a job interview. What you're looking for here is someone to come into your life in an intimate capacity, and if you misrepresent yourself, they will figure that out eventually and resent you for it. If something about you is likely to be a big turnoff for them and you're worried they won't like you because of it, Tell them, screen out the people that don't like you for who you are, or else you're gonna get trapped with the person who wants you to be someone else. If they leave, it's, it's good. You didn't waste your time. Likewise, if you have deal breakers, screen the other person for those. You don't wanna find out later they're a turf or Joe Rogan fan or something. That being said, some people will tell you to play hard to get or whatever, and don't do that. I don't know where this advice comes from. It is terrible advice. Do not play games with people. If you like someone, just let them know. Just say, hey, that was fun. I had fun with you. Let's meet up again soon. Don't leave them guessing. Take charge and let them know you're interested. You probably can't tell if they're interested and you don't want to end up in that situation where both people like each other but think the other person is disinterested and just be honest with them. Just always be honest. People like it when you're honest and it's really easy to do. Inevitably though, you will be rejected. Not always, but everyone is sometimes. Some of us more than others. I get it, believe me. I get it. Normally, I am against the idea of memorizing scripts to use on people in social scenarios, but in this case, I'll make an exception because so many dudes, myself included, fuck this up so badly. Memorize the following sentence and use it whenever you are rejected. Well, I can't say I'm not disappointed, but I appreciate you being honest with me. Then get out of the conversation as quickly as possible. Just get out of there, run away. You are not going to make the situation feel better for you or anyone else. Just leave. Privately, you can handle things however you like. Cry, rend your garments, eat a pint of ice cream, join a cult, whatever makes you feel better. This advice comes from a lifetime of being rejected and taking it poorly. You can't control how other people feel about you, but you can control how you treat them as a result. And even if they're shitty about it, your job is to put out nothing but kindness into the world. And you will be glad you did, eventually. But not today. Today you're going to be heartbroken. So just walk away. Just leave it. Trust me. And lastly, don't base your self-esteem on whether you're able to get a lot of dates. That's a shitty way to think about yourself and a shitty way to approach dating. If you're not getting a lot of dates, that means you're bad at finding dates. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. Believe me, way hotter people than you struggle to find dates and eminently less attractive people than you are slaying all day, every day. It truly is not personal. There's no reason to believe that you can't do it. Remember, this process is never a one-way street. It takes two people and you cannot control the outcome. That outcome doesn't necessarily say anything about you. Over time though, all of this becomes less difficult because over time you feel less pressure in romantic situations because you realize everyone else is out there scrabbling in the dirt too. Nobody knows what they're doing. Just have fun. Enjoy yourself. It's supposed to be fun. Everybody wants to be with somebody who's enjoying themselves. That's an attractive quality. Oh, and one note about eye contact. Hello and welcome to the Eyeball Zone. Here in the Eyeball Zone, you've got a date with eyeballs on a small leftist content creator. Are you gonna wear that? N no, no, it's, it's fine. Hey, do you wanna learn philosophy stuff, but it's too boring? Well, in Bimbo, a philosophical analysis, a title I am deeply uncomfortable saying out loud, Blonde Philosophy talks about the concept of bimbos in relation to Nietzsche's moral skepticism and Baudelard's simulcr... Simul simul 
It's such a long sentence and I tripped up in some simul simulacra. But like in a comedy way, like with jokes, like it's not boring. I know. I hear the name Baudelaire and I'm like kind of checked out too. But this one was interesting. I promise. And only 337 subscribers, folks. Get in on the ground floor on this one because we're sending it to the moon. If you have a small leftist project you need eyeballs to devour, alive, screaming, send no more than one email to thoughtslimeeditor at gmail.com with pertinent details like your pronouns and the word eyeballs somewhere in the description. And perhaps you will find yourself trapped here in the eyeball zone. What are you doing still watching? Go out there, get some dates, you little cutie. Why are you still watching this video? I, I mean, I, it's, good, it's good that you are for me. Uh, it's good for my analytics. But uh, for you, you should be, it's, 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 it's beautiful out there. Go out and find love. If you loved this video, press love or like as it's called in some countries. Also subscribe. And if you find the love of your life because of the advice in this video, which I'm not going to lie to you, one in 10 chances you won't, uh, then go ahead and uh, uh, give me some money on Patreon if you want and if you can. And those two factors are very different things uh, at patreon.com slash thought slime. Also, I, I do talk about horror movies over on youtube.com slash scaredycatstv. I don't know who keeps saying I don't, but I definitely do.